Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of ISTQB Specialist Automotive Software Tester. In this particular tutorial, we have covered uh, chapter one in our previous tutorial. So in this tutorial, we'll be covering the sample questions on the chapter one. And as a part of it, we will be understanding a lot of things. So very first thing is to understand that what kind of pattern do we have from this chapter? As this chapter is completely, completely on the introduction, and it's just limited to few of the common introduction about different standards and uh, basic introduction about the process and life cycle and lots of you know, similar thing. Thus, we will be having three questions coming from this examination. So this particular chapter will include only three questions where uh, the distribution is shown on the slide right now. So based on that, you can prepare well for the certification accordingly. Well, so let's get into the sample questions from this chapter. Number one, what are the six stages in the system product life cycle according to ISO IEC 24748? So the standard are going to play a vital role. But yes, all you need to do is make sure that when you learn something called as a process or you talk about any of these steps, then you look forward for what kind of standard we are following to define that process. Because a process as an automobile industry and the standard really plays a vital role. And if you ignore the standards here, it might be conflicting a lot to answer any questions in upcoming chapters as well. But this is a very straightforward question, irrespective of the standard or, you know, when you talk about the process, the generic process is concept, development, production, utilization, support, retirement. And that we have learned as a part of the very first tutorial in our series. So that's where we will be picking up the right answer as straightforward D that is concept, development, production, utilization, support, and retirement. So if you have any confusion here, you can go back and refer to the tutorial. Let's move to the question number two. Which of the following statement is true? Select one option. Now here, the question is about just making sure that the statement what we are looking at is which one is true. So here they have used a very common trick and very, 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 you know, a tricky way to ask you the question by giving the word not in all the options. So you must be very, very, very careful from the point of answering this question. Option A says the release recommendation of the certified automation tester, so tester does not have any influence on the release. So the release recommendation generally when a tester makes Obviously, it has a lot of value. So that's not the right option, and that's not true. The tester has a direct interaction in, main, in terms of release recommendation. So the tester will definitely recommend, and that has a very good influence on terms of releasing the product into the market or moving into the production. So A is not correct. That's false. B, the release provisions of the test object do not have any influence on the work of the certified automation software tester. So I think again, this is uh, when you talk about the test object, test object is something which is very much, very much uh, from the point of testing and thus the release provisions of a particular test object is not having any kind of contribution from tester is what it is trying to say. So that's not correct again, because uh, they don't have any specific uh, parameters in order to ignore the contribution of tester from the point of test object measurement or quality. C, the release recommendation of the certified automation software tester does not have any influence on the level of maturity uh, corresponding to the software. So this is something which we can talk about uh, which will be very helpful to understand because it says the testing affects the level of software maturity by detection of the defects. The release recommendation, however, cannot affect the level of maturity. See, level of maturity is what? When you generally talk about improvising your skills. So that can be done even after that. But it's not directly uh, related to the recommendation what you make for release. So maturity is after that, where you can generally uh, propose your key findings through the project and tell that how exactly we can work. And specific when it comes to the automobile industry, it's more about the new trends, new features, what exactly we can do better in order to meet the customer expectations. So do not forget that maturity is more about customer needs and satisfaction. Thus, this is a statement which is true, which clearly says that, that it doesn't have direct impact. So right answer here is C, 
that is the release recommendation of the certified automation tester does not have any influence on the level of maturity of the corresponding software. We can always do that after the release. And D anyways, uh, the release recommendation does not have any influence on the scope of delivery. Of course, scope of delivery is directly proportional to the release. So that's not the right answer. Let's move to question number three here. Three, with which of the features or measures listed below can the objective of an increasingly complex software development project be best achieved in the short run? So that's a very complicated question. If you have to read this carefully, that would be really good because uh, reading patiently the questions which play a vital role because you understand exactly what they want to know. Otherwise, they will have so many twists and twirls which will lead you to understand something else and pick the wrong answer. So with which of the measures listed below can the objective of an increasing complex software development project be best achieved in short run? Okay, so we are not looking at long term and we are looking at the complex software development project and which one of this is a measure which can meet this objective. That's how you should break your question. So let's look at the option A, by insourcing and outsourcing the project. Uh, that's a typical thing uh, to ins insource and already running and outsourcing project again endangers the project objectives as internal resources must be trained and included in the project. So, you know, outsourcing and insourcing could be a trouble, uh, uh, you know, from the outside because outside people might be doing based on their way and their standards. But when it comes to internal people, the internal people may not be so familiar with the process or probably the exact uh, way of making it happen. That's the reason you outsource it. So if it is outsourced, bringing it in source would not be a good way to do that. B, by using effective methods and process. Uh, yes, because we are talking about short run in very short interval of time, what kind of measures you can use. So yes, having good methodologies and good processes can definitely help you to meet your objectives. When you talk about C, by ensuring efficient qualification of the employees, uh, the qualification of employee is one of the parameter. It is really important. But for the project objective, it does not matter if it is efficient because project might be any complex level. And does your employee qualification meets that expectation? That is more important. So not exactly the qualification. You may have qualification from the point of graduate, postgraduate, or a master degree on that. But does that really uh, make any importance to the project needs? Like, for example, what kind of experience do you have? Is that a two years experience guy or is that a 10 years old manager? So is, you know, that is what is going to make uh, more importance. So here it is going to be more efficient with from the point of the experience and the knowledge about the product, the domain knowledge and many other factors like that. So alone qualification can be important, but not fulfilling the exact need of the scenario what we asked you. And D, by outsourcing of complex projects. Outsourcing generally means that you are sending it to another organization and you are not doing it yourself. Thus, it will. It means that higher administrative efforts and it requires coordination with the contractor, making sure that they fulfill your guidelines, how strictly they follow your contract and deliver the product back on time. So a lot of trust factor has to be built. So in the short run, the effort are higher and the project objectives are in danger. So not possible that all the third parties or organizations can really understand your pain and can do the same thing. So most important thing would be the method and the process. Does the right answer here is B, by using effective methods and process. Well, so that was some of the sample questions from this particular chapter. I hope you really got a good idea to understand some of the basic questions. But yes, as we proceed ahead, we will have more complex things coming into picture. So please uh, make sure that you have a good understanding on each and everything in order to answer your examination very well. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.